Storm systems moving through Western Mass this afternoon. Good Tuesday evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Western Mass News at 6. I'm Chris Pisano. Let's turn things over right away to first warning meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff. And Jacob, what does the rest of the evening have in store for us weather-wise? Yeah, so I still think that we're going to be tracking a few showers, downpours, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. But unlike yesterday, we have not seen any severe weather. That's the good news. Still a couple of flashes of lightning possible, maybe some torrential rain. But I think overall, a little bit a step down from where we were yesterday. Still tracking some of that uh, heavy rain moving through western Hamden County, also into Franklin County into central and eastern Franklin County. Let's zoom on into Tolland. You're seeing some of that heavy rain as we speak. Also near the jog in Southwick, Granville, you're seeing heavy rain uh, through Westfield into Holyoke, Chicopee. Also some uh, moderate showers and then into Greenfield into Shelburne, Sunderland, Deerfield into uh, Irving and Wendell. Also Orange and Warwick. All of you are seeing some of those heavier downpours and this is all part of that system that's been in place really since Sunday and each afternoon we get a little daytime heating. We get these storms bubbling up. You see though no thunder and lightning associated with any of these storms in Western Mass as we speak. That could change but that's certainly good news for us. We have this big storm system that's stuck. It does finally loosen its grip as we go into Thursday but that means tomorrow also unsettled. We're staying in the 70s for tomorrow. You see some of the showers into the afternoon, into the evening before we see the system move away, leaving us with drier conditions for your Thursday. But definitely a textured sky there. You see some dark clouds off in the distance, but as I said, no thunder or lightning associated with it. 64 for an overnight low and returning into the middle 70s tomorrow. Some showers, some thunderstorms, mostly cloudy skies, and you're probably waking up with a little bit of drizzle and fog in most locations. Full look at the forecast, including, importantly, 4th of July. That's ahead in just a few minutes. Chris? Jacob, thanks. Only on Western Mass News, the president of the Big E speaking out today on the cancellation of this year's fair. Jean Cassidy spoke with Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo, and she joins us now live from the fairgrounds with more on that. Audrey? Gene Cassidy tells me that he used all the resources he possibly could to develop a COVID-19 safety plan for this year's fair. However, he says it was ultimately the turnout and the popularity of this past weekend's drive through food event that tipped the scales in favor of canceling the Big E. You've got Disney and you've got the big gaming companies, uh, Six Flags, other large fairs, and, and we had access to all of their uh, COVID plans. Big E President Gene Cassidy says even pulling from the most creative names in entertainment couldn't cobble together a safe coronavirus plan to keep people healthy at the Eastern States Exposition. Traffic flow in the fairgrounds, traffic flow through buildings, uh, the wearing of masks, uh, with the assumption that uh, it was likely that far less people would want to be in crowds. But Cassidy tells Western Mass News he tested that assumption at this past weekend's drive through food event at the fairgrounds. A test of crowd wariness versus nostalgia for the Big E. The market responded so overwhelmingly to the test that uh, it, it told us uh, here, the management staff of the Eastern States, that uh, perhaps the Big E would be responded to in the same way. With no way to control the crowds, West Springfield Mayor William Reichelt says the possibility of turning a sick person away from the fair could have made the town a COVID-19 hotspot. Do we really want people coming from all over? Um, and then if they get turned away being stuck in Westside and kind of wandering around, potentially spreading the virus. Reichelt says he's working with the Big E to possibly bring back the event that played a pivotal role in canceling the whole fair, the drive through food experience. We experience that we can do better with our traffic and make it flow better. They also plan to showcase the vendors who are still trying to earn a living without the 17 day fair and 1.6 million pairs of eyes on their products. They've mentioned maybe virtual tours of estate buildings and highlighted vendors that are gonna, that would have been there. Though many knew the cancellation was a possibility, Cassidy wants fairgoers to know. He tried to stay positive as long as he could. I kept cheering until the very last minute. Both Cassidy and Reichelt say that they are working to make it so that the cream puffs can be offered to those who are interested, not just during when the fair would have been, but throughout the summer. Live in West Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News.
Well, at least we may have those cream puffs. Thank you, Audrey, for that live report. Governor Charlie Baker updating the state's travel guidance today amid the coronavirus pandemic. And Western Mass News reporter Jordan Jagelinzer getting answers from home on what nearby travelers can expect. Jordan. Chris, travelers experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19 are being asked not to return back to the state of Massachusetts. However, some of the restrictions are being lifted. The 14-day self-quarantine, which has been in place for almost two months for travelers coming from Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, New York, and New Jersey, effective tomorrow, will be lifted. And here's why. We've had a 14-day um, uh, quarantine advisory in place now for quite a while and generally speaking people have been pretty good about complying with it. What we thought we should do today given the facts on the ground was to make clear that the states that basically surround us um, here in the Northeast all of which have had very positive trends for the past several weeks um, people in those places should be allowed to come to Massachusetts um, without having to live up to that 14-day quarantine. Residents traveling back from any other states are still required to self-quarantine for 14 days. Reporting live from home, I'm Jordan Jagelinzer. Chris, back to you. Jordan, thank you for that live report. Now at 6, the Cinemark Theater at the Eastfield Mall in Springfield is closed for good because of the pandemic with no plans to reopen. This coming is quite a surprise to many moviegoers and even the mall management. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis joins us live outside the Eastfield Mall with more. Leon. Chris, you know, the Eastfield Mall management says this is a complete surprise to them. They say communication between Cinemark was good until there was complete silence. I'm, I'm very upset about this. You know, we've been working hard uh, with the mall, and the whole, the whole COVID shutdown was um, challenging, as you may guess. But we were holding our own. Um, but, you know, this is this is a big hit. That's the reaction Doug Thompson had when he saw for himself the emptied out Cinemark movie theater. He tells Western Mass News the first sign of trouble when they attempted to discuss reopening plans with the company. We found it odd that um, we, we received absolutely no replies. So that was a red flag. Then this happened. Last week, midweek, I got a call from my crew telling me there was a bunch of 30-yarder roll-offs coming in and out of the property. After that, he saw crews taking out screens and speakers. The next day I came in and I came right down and walked inside and sure enough, um, they were demoing the place without our knowledge, without <clears throat> you know any, any communication with us whatsoever. Thompson says Eastfield Mall will take a hit from this loss. It's gonna negatively affect us. We're, <laughs> We're not in panic mode. You know, we will uh, search out a replacement uh, theater tenant. Um, matter of fact, we already started. Um, it's, it makes it problematic for us to, uh, you know, to take a, a potential replacement uh, theater tenant in here and there's no screens, there's no speakers, and, you know, pretty much the, the place has been gutted. Thompson says he is hopeful, however, with plans to bring in new businesses to the mall where Macy's and Sears used to be. More details on that expected soon. Live in Springfield, Leon Purvis, Western Mass News. Leon, thank you for that information. A banner day in Massachusetts. The state reports zero new deaths since Monday due to COVID-19. Let's take a closer look at today's numbers. The state reports 114 new cases. That is up 13 from yesterday, with a total number of 108,882 cases in the Bay State. Again, there are no deaths to report today, no new deaths. The statewide death toll now stands at 8,054. And for more coverage on the coronavirus emergency as it develops, log on to our free Western Mass News streaming app. The Springfield City Council beginning its second night of budget discussions with fallout from last night's vote against funding for a new shooting range for the police department. Western Mass News reporter Sarah Grinelli spoke with a city councilor to see why they decided to bring this item to a halt. Sarah? 
Chris, I was just listening in to the city council meeting that is voting again on the budget, and one of the councilors just recommended cutting the police department's overtime pay, and that money would go towards de-escalation training and other programs. Now, earlier today, I did speak with Councilor Orlando Ramos, who says yesterday the city voted against a shooting range. As calls for change in police departments grow louder across the country following the death of George Floyd, the Springfield City Council has taken a stand, voting Monday night to cut more than $800,000 from the city's budget for a new police shooting range. It sends a terrible message to the people who have been marching our streets and, and contacting us as legislators and talking to us and demanding uh, police accountability. It would send a terrible message to those people that the first major expense for the Springfield Police Department is a shooting range? I mean, it's tone deaf. Western Mass News got a hold of the mayor's fiscal 2021 recommended budget. Here you can see under the facilities department a professional service item showing a budget of $809,000. City Councilor Orlando Ramos says that would be for leasing space for the shooting range over the course of the next 20 years, coming out to be more than $16 million. The Springfield Police Department says right now they use a range in the basement of the police headquarters. The department says the range is at least 60 years old and presents health issues if used for prolonged periods of time. Officers also go to outdoor ranges. Ramos says the money spent could be put to better use considering the city is looking into building a new headquarters in the next few years, which would also include a shooting range. We want to see more police training. We would like to see more de-escalation training for the Springfield Police Department. We'd like to see more diversity training for police departments. And, um, and we would like to see more um, uh, uh, job opportunities for people in the community. A statement from Springfield's Chief Administrative and Financial Officer says, quote, We're going to look at all our options, including moving forward with the lease. We will work with the counselors this summer and provide a cost-benefit analysis to demonstrate the needs. Chris, we reached out to the mayor's office for a statement. The mayor's office says the mayor didn't want to release a statement since the budget is still in discussion. Live in Springfield, Sarah Grinelli for Western Mass News. Sarah, thank you for that live report. A follow-up tonight now out of Springfield. Big Mamu served customers for the last time tonight. Chef Wayne Hooker announcing last week on Facebook that he's retiring tomorrow, July 1st. And Big Mamu in Springfield will be closing. Western Mass News spoke with a customer who says while sad to see a favorite close, she's not too worried about getting her Cajun fix anytime soon. Well, they have the to-go, so I think we'll have a little bit more because we'll still have it, but some of the stuff's not at the to-go, so we're all about the crab cakes today. Chef Wayne Hooker says his food truck, Cajun on the go, will remain open. An increase in people buying homes after a record-breaking decline. I'm Kayla Burton. Coming up on Western Mass News, I'm getting answers from a local listing agent on why the sudden uptick. And later, why Connecticut officials are pumping the brakes on reopening their bars.